Hey, English 101 Online, welcome to week seven. So here we are on our Bright Space page. As always, in the announcement section, you see the link to this video that I sent you, but also to all of our quick links. I suggest you start this week, like almost every week, with the calendar. So we're in week seven. We are moving on to our E3 assignment. Last week, you got it, you read it. Some of you have already started it. Um, however you might be rolling, we're really gonna share our planning this week. So there is a reading, Body Rituals of the Nasarima, that I would like for you to do. In discussion board number seven, which is all about point of view, there is also an audio book of the reading if you prefer to listen to it. So you have some options here. For your discussion board, after you've read it, uh, and then look at the document that explains it in our weekly materials, I'd like you to think about insider versus outsider point of view. So for example, in the discussion board, I'm asking you to identify one group you're an insider to. So one group I'm absolutely an insider to is educators, right? I'm a professor. I have literally been in school my entire life in some form. I'll be 47 in July, and whether I was a student or teaching, there has never been a year of my life that I was not in school. We do get summers off. So there's that part, right? So I feel like I'm an insider to this community. There are things that I understand and uh, philosophies that I subscribe to because I'm an insider. So some of those words are like terms, right? Like I know what Brightspace is, I'm pretty good with Google Docs, things like rubrics and lesson plans or academic peer reviewed journals. Those are all in my wheelhouse. But also I have beliefs. I believe in education. I believe it's a pathway to success and that it's key to having an awesome life. And those are all awesome things, right? But there are also things that because I'm an, an educator that keeps me um, or pro sometimes prevents me from being able to communicate clearly with other people. For example, one drawback of that might be that I do prioritize education. And as some of you all wrote about, particularly in your group papers, that means that I might put less emphasis on other ways of being successful, particularly in the trades, uh, which require different types of education. Also, I love to read. I love, love, love books. So when people say to me things like, I haven't read a book in fill in the blank, I am like automatically judging and I have to stop myself. Like, I don't want to do that, but it just kicks in. It's like a bodily function. It's like if someone said to you, I haven't taken a shower in a month, I'd be like, oh, right? So these are things that possibly keep me from being able to understand or communicate because I am an insider to that group. So I'm asking you to pick a group you're an insider to and explain the positives and the drawbacks and a group that you're an outsider to and explain the positives and the drawbacks in your discussion board after reading Body Rituals. And the last thing I'm asking for you to do this week is to share your E3 planning. As I said earlier, you should have already read through the assignment, started making some decisions about who you wanna work with, even if it's nobody, what organization within your community you wanna talk about, and is it a positive or a negative? Um, <clears throat> also, you had to choose your own adventure. Do you want to do an essay, a podcast, or a video? So I'm asking you to share with me that information. So I'm just going to click on our weekly materials link. I know you all are familiar with this. In here, you'll see at the bottom, the last one just says all online classes. This is not the first time we've done a shared Google Doc, so I know that you all are familiar with how to do these. So I've given you some examples at the top, but when you're ready, sometime this week, you're gonna come in and put in your name, what organization you're focusing on and contact information for that organization, what's your target audience, what community have you identified, why'd you choose it, are you planning on working alone with a partner, with a group, and then are you planning on doing a video, a podcast, or an essay? I want to have all of this information this week so that I can give you feedback if, in fact, I see some things that are not quite going to work for this assignment. So there we are. Okay. Last, I just wanted to take a second to talk a bit about grades. I have returned a gang of emails about E2 specifically, but I wanted to talk about the way grades work in this class as well as how to read your Bright Space page. So in order to do that, I first want to share with you our class syllabus. So let me do that. 
hopefully this looks familiar to you all as well. That highlighted part at the bottom, other than the breakdown of your points, says pretty clearly that in Brightspace, your grades are going to only be averaged at week nine, which is the day you come back from spring break, and then week 12 and completion of the course, right? So with that said, the vast majority of you have all of your work graded, whether that's going to be E1, well, no, no, no E2s are graded yet, E1s and your discussion boards, right? But there are those of you that have not quite gotten everything in or graded uh, for a variety of reasons, right? Some of it is me, some of it is you. What I want you to know, right, is that I don't give zeros unless you didn't submit something. I literally have to have nothing from you to give you a zero. So if you have a zero in the grade book for E1, that means I didn't get it. If you have a zero in the grade book for E2, that means you did not submit it in Brightspace. I did not get it. Okay. Now, for E2, as I've communicated to a lot of people in email, if one of your group members submitted it and you just didn't, right, go ahead and submit it. So long as one of the people in your group submitted on time, I'll take that as being on time and then I'll grade yours, right, because I don't take late work. If you go ahead and submit it and that assignment was current and on time in your version, in your Google Doc that I gave you on the due date, I will go ahead and take it, right? Because I can verify that date time. Yes, it was done. Totally understand sometimes that miscommunications happen. Even though I said in your conference and in the video, everyone has to submit their own copy. If you submit nothing in Brightspace, even if you did, you know, I don't know, 90% of the work yourself, right? You will still get a zero. Without a submission, the zero will remain. If you had a zero, right? Either for E2 and you resubmitted it because I told you just that information there or for one of your discussion boards because I gave y'all a week to kind of catch up on some things, right? And next to that zero in Brightspace, you see that little yellow sign that means there's something submitted that hasn't been viewed. That simply means I haven't got around to re-looking at what you submitted and updating that grade. Also in the gray book, if you have that little dash, right? That's not a zero, right? That means I haven't gotten to whatever it is that you submitted, but everything will be current by the Monday after spring break, week nine, as it says in your syllabus and has from the beginning of the semester. Again, for most of you, this doesn't matter, um, but for some of you, you had some questions and I wanted to make sure I clarified them in this email. With that said, that's it for this week. Again, just your discussion board with the reading Body Rituals of the Nasrima and telling me everything that you have planned for your E3 assignment. As always, if you have any questions, go ahead and email me.